Welcome to My Two Cents with Keith Beggs from Steadfast Wealth Strategies. In this podcast, we show high-level executives and business owners why comprehensive financial planning and executive bonus structures don't have to be too good to be true. Keith draws on his experience in realistic financial planning, and expert guests share his two cents about academically-based financial planning that you have to hear to believe. Now, on to the show. Hey, everyone. Keith Beggs, founder and CEO of Steadfast Wealth Strategies and the host of the My Two Cents podcast. Today, we are kicking off a five-part series for small business owners. Uh, I would say here in Houston, but really, this is for nationally. Everything we're doing here in Houston can be done anywhere. Our first episode today, we have Doug Thorpe, executive business coach. Uh, He's worked from Fortune 500 all the way down to family businesses, talking about the importance of coaching, not getting stuck, uh, not letting hitting a wall and kind of being staying the stuck there by yourself, uh, but finding help and getting past that, having those breakthrough moments and continue driving your business. We're going to move into employee and executive benefit packages. The employer-employee relationship has really changed on its head over the last 24 months. So what are companies doing? And we have USI, Adam Feinberg coming on to talk about the employee benefits. What are employees looking for? How do you make your money go farther on that side? And then we'll have John McDonough from Cool Springs Financial, who we've had on before, talking about the executive benefits, executive bonus, financial packages that you can do and offer to recruit, retain, and reward top talent without destructing or distributing your cash flow. So we want to keep your cash in your pocket and still reward your top employees. There's a way to do that. And it's phenomenal. The last two, real quick, we're going to talk about taxes. If you have a straight pass-through entity, Sarah and her, who's my personal CPA, can help you reduce or in some cases eliminate income tax. And that's not hyperbole. So if you have a past entity, you'll want to hear that episode. And finally, Nick Dupree is going to come on and talk about estate planning. Um, how do we pass these companies on? Whether it's a family business to our kids, how do we make um, the transition from a business owner to the to selling a business and, and then that type of planning. So um, just super excited about what we put together to kick off 2022. Please subscribe uh, to the podcast so you don't miss anything and you'll get the updates. And uh, we look forward to uh, you guys listening and hopefully helping you guys out in 2022. So let's kick it off with Doug. Good morning, Doug. Thanks for jumping on here. How are you doing this morning? I'm good, Keith, and thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, we are. We're super excited about our small business. We're, we're business owner series that we're putting together and uh, feel extremely privileged to be able to get you on. I, I really want to dive into what business coaching is and, and some of the misconceptions about it. But before we do, Doug, I want to give our listeners an idea uh, of how lucky we are to have you on here. I mean, your bio is three pages long. I'm going to highlight some so we have time to talk, uh, but you're a performance-driven senior executive, entrepreneur, board member. You work with companies from Fortune 500, like ExxonMobil, UPS, Centerpoint, and Bank of America, all the way down to some more regional brands that are still very large, right? Crane Logistics, Regions Bank, Franklin Convey. You are the founder and director of Jobs Ministry Southwest, a non-denominational faith-based 501c3 that was featured in four mag- um, Forbes, excuse me, Fortune magazine. Since its establishment in 2008, that ministry has delivered over 35,000 training and career coaching hours. Doug attained his MBA in management from Troy University and his BBA in management from Texas A&M University. He is a John Maxwell certified business coach and a solid certified executive leadership coach. He is also certified in Hogan Assessments as an experienced board member. Doug has served with both nonprofit and for-profit organizations, and he is a member of the International Coaching Federation and an associate of the Institute of Coaching at McLean Harvard Medical School. Okay, let me catch my breath, Doug. <laughs> I just can't keep a job. Yeah, man. <laughs> is that the problem? Oh, I forgot. I did. Yeah, I forgot. You're also the author of five books featuring his original, The Uncommon Commodity, Common Sense Guide for First-Time Managers. So, Doug, thank you again uh, for being on here. We are glad uh, that you are our kickoff guest on this series. So, as we kind of have been talking about emails and in person, we're at the beginning of the year, right? Everyone's got a bunch of new goals they've set. They've kind of reevaluated 2021, where last year, right? Maybe they're catching this a year from now. And they're trying to kick off 2022, and everyone always wants to kick off the year with a bang and everyone's super focused and ready to go. And a lot of times that stuff can fade, but I'm sure right now is a busy time for you because everyone's starting to say, okay, what do we need to better perform next year? Maybe we need a coach or maybe we need this or that. And so you're getting calls. And so 
small business owners or Fortune 500 companies, when they come to you, what are they typically looking for? Well, that's a great question. And as you can imagine, I think the simple answer is it's all over the board. Oftentimes, when the client calls, they'll be describing a particular problem. They're, they're feeling stuck some way or another. They have worked hard to get where they are, and they maybe can't break through some wall that they're starting to feel is present. <clears throat> or they know there's a, a given problem in their environment, you know, on the team, in the market, with their product, whatever. So the business advisory type work I do starts there. It, it starts with what's the big rock you're trying to move. Let's talk about that. Let's try to break it down and figure out what's going on. I'm reminded of a, a recent case owner came to me and I won't divulge a lot of details because I want to maintain some confidentiality, but the essence was in, in his ask amounted to my company's making money. I got customers, but I have no cash. I mean, personally and corporately, I have no cash. So what's up with that? That's a problem. <laughs> and so that was the big rock we had to dive into and, and start, you know, breaking that down and helping them move the needle. And do you find often that people come to coaching as a last resort? Or do you find that a lot of times they're coming to you early on? Where, and, and can you see a big difference in the success from when they find you or when they maybe you know, get involved with you? I think that too varies. It, it, it can tend to be all over the board. It, let me start with, if I may, there, there's one kind of overarching theme that I see in the entrepreneurial community. It's, it's a good thing because that's why they're there. That's why they feel the drive and motivation to go run a business. It's that entrepreneurial spirit. But there's a dark side to that spirit that has to do with what many would call ego. I got this. I don't need any help. Nobody can tell me how to run my idea. And that gets in their way. It becomes a giant blind spot that keeps them from making those progressive steps of growth for, their, for the good of the company. Right. A phrase I heard a lot of times is that a lot of these business owners, they get stuck working in the business and not so much on the business. And that is a, that's a tough transition. And one, a lot of times it's hard to kind of decide when that, when to make that transition because they, the idea is their baby, right? That's their incubator. That's what they're so successful with. And a lot of times they have to give away a lot of that control so they can run the business. Is that kind of what you find where there's, there's a tough handoff? That's exactly there? it. And it, it is a step on the kind of, I call it an emotional journey to own a company. You have to get out of that solopreneur mindset. If your idea is going to take off, you have to scale and scale. Isn't just about a bigger office or bigger facility. You've got to add people to the team to leverage all the good things you've got going on and move it forward. But for a lot of entrepreneurs, that's scary as hell to start thinking about adding people to the mix because the thinking typically goes to your point, Nobody knows how to do my baby or take care of my baby like I know how to do it. So I don't trust anybody to come help me do this. And, and do you find that the executives and you typically work with executives or business owners? That's correct, Doug, right? Right. Do you find that typically the, the hardships they're facing are scale? When, you, when we say scale, is it, is it financial hardships where you have to get in and maybe like accounting, like we're looking at the books, like where are we just mismanaging our funds? Or is it typically on, on what you're mentioning there on just the ability to hire and release control? I mean, is, is it all over the place again? It, it, it can be all over the place. I mean, there's some symptomatic problems that are right now they're headline. People are talking about supply chain issues and, and employment issues. So it's hard to find the right people to fit in some of these jobs because uh, right now the employment market is crazier than it's been in really honestly in, in I'm going to go so far as to say my lifetime. <laughs> right. Uh, so there, there are those kind of obvious issues, but I think there are ultimately deeper issues that an owner is going to have to wrestle with, whether they do it today or tomorrow or next year, they're, they're going to have to make some additional changes in their mindset to make the company grow. And so that's a lot of, I don't want to say stuck in their ways, but they've gotten to a point doing it 
X way, right? Or Y way or Z way. But as they scale and with the way the world is changes being expedited, right? If you looked at from the difference in 1800 to 1900, and you look at the difference from 2019 to 2022 now, oh, yeah. I mean, how, how quickly expediting cha- you know, change is being expedited. And it sounds like some of the concerns are these business owners are having trouble keeping up with that change or maybe realizing that they need to change where they're going to become obsolete. Is that fair? Or Yeah, I think so. The, another phrase that's pretty popular, what got you here won't get you there. So let's put some specific numbers on it to give a scaler here and an idea. So an entrepreneur starts up, obviously day one, it's going to be zero, right? There's zero <laughs> top side revenue you just opened up, but you do some work and maybe it's a year, 18 months, maybe it's two years. You start hitting that seven digit top side revenue number, million, million, half, maybe 2 million. And you're starting to feel you've got some momentum. You've your idea is taking legs. It's creating some success. So now you have to start making some of those baby step decisions about scale, expanding the company, growing the team. What I tell my owners is the the challenge in business school, they always show business growth as some kind of nice sloping curve. The reality is it's giant chunks of stair-step decisions. Give an example, a guy that runs some kind of machine shop, he may start out with one lathe and that's a high ticket item, but he cranks his specialty, does his thing on that one lathe. Again, he's, it's time to grow. He's got to make that big stair step leap to buy a second lathe. And maybe that's a $20,000 investment or a $50,000 investment. Well, that's not an easy decision to make when you just barely broke into the black. So it, it's those kind of decisions that start complicating life for the, the growth journey. And then when you talk about moving from, say, 2 million to 5 million, that's, there are a lot of potholes on that road to move to that level. It's not simply a matter of putting more units out the door. Right. I mean, a lot of times they're looking at taking on debt to do certain extensions or different things and what that looks like. And it's good to get someone that's not in the business to give an outside purview that, can, that has no emotional tie to the business, right? That's, that's one right. Thing that we're able to provide is I'm not, when we work with people financially, I'm not emotional to their money. They're very emotional to their money. It's their money. They're holding on to it, right? right. In your case, it's right. the business. They're very tight. You know, this is their baby. I can look at it from a completely, I can't think of the word right now, but you know, just just straight forward from the numbers, the same thing for you, and then give some valid insights and some ideas of maybe where to go. Well, and it, you're right. And it is a, a, an incredibly emotionally close held proposition. And with a lot of people, and I was guilty in my young entrepreneurial day, I see scenarios where they've hired family begin. Why? Because maybe family is willing to work for cheap. So you're not burning a lot of cash to have them there. But the real question is, does that person have the unique skills and gifts that they can contribute to the good of the company? And I love the solution that is uh, proposed in the uh, the whole entrepreneur operating system methodology. A, a lot of small businesses are becoming subscribers to the idea. The, the book was called Traction by Gino Wickman. It, the system is called the entrepreneur operating system. And it's, it's a whole lot of steps and strategies about how to streamline and increase the productivity of your company. One of his principles when it comes to people is forget personalities and resumes, draw your chart of the jobs you need, define boxes on the chart and the functions they're going to contribute to the good of the company and then go find the person that's going to do that. And in-law brother Joe or Aunt Sally or Grandpa Bill is not necessarily that guy. Right. You, you, I think you do see a lot of companies start as family businesses and it's hard. They feel like they just keep promoting those people as the company grows, but maybe that's not their best role. It might be time to get someone from the outside to come take that on. So Doug, you've been doing this for, give, give me the number of years again that you've been doing the, the coaching. Well, the for, formal coaching offering I've been doing about 12 years. And prior to that, I was doing some business consulting. And that what I found in my consulting business while I was being engaged to go 
perform specific projects for clients, I inevitably found the owner or the executive sponsor of the project to be giving me one of these. Can you come in my office and shut the door? And I got to talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it just sort of resonated. And, and I realized that for whatever reason, people seem to find me trustworthy for those kind of discussions. And I thought, well, I think that's what coaches do. So that's when I started really uh, studying uh, what this notion of being a coach was about. Okay. So on that, the last 12 years, I, and people's problems the same in entrepreneurship. To me, I feel like they're probably the same. They're different, but the same in a lot of ways that there were five or 10 years ago, or with everything that we're dealing with now as a world, as an economy, as a country, whatever way you want to look at it, has the business owner's problem changed dramatically over the last 24 months? It's a great question. I think the market dynamic around them, the, the environment that everybody's operating in is definitely more challenging than perhaps it's ever been. But at the end of the day, I think the fundamental problems that exist have been around for decades. I saw these, I was first really closely introduced to this in my banking days. You didn't mention in the bio, but that's okay. I, my early professional career, I was a banker of all things. And I saw a lot of businesses that had started as mom and pops and grew to be multi-million dollar companies, but they were suffering some of these things. And I put a title or a term on it back then. I call it the paradox of success. The very thing that got you here is not going to get you there. You know, if you don't make these really critical decisions about changing the executive leadership team, changing your own mindset and your sense of ownership. Companies that make that pivot do it very well and continue their success journey, 2X, 3X, 4X the company. But the ones that get stuck at some point, it inevitably crashes and burns, sad to say. Yeah. You know, I see that a lot with business. They don't want to upset the apple cart. If they're making a little bit of money, we're making money. They just kind of want a status quo because we're making money. But the status quo is, you know, it's that if you're not moving forward, you're probably moving backwards in the business world. That's right. So we can't get comfortable with the status quo, but no one wants to upset the apple cart, right? Everything's working right now. We're making some money. Let's not do something because we could maybe all of a sudden not be making money. And they get, it's, it's a, they get paralyzed and that's that paradox that they're in. So let's shift gears a little bit, Doug. So everyone has maybe some misconceptions or some reasons why like they're nervous about hiring a business coach, right? Or uh, the things that they think or that they've heard. So let's just kind of use the word misconceptions, right? <laughs> when you're talking to someone and they're interviewing you about hiring them or hiring you, excuse me, to work with them, what are some of the questions or concerns that they typically voice or that, that, that maybe that they've heard about business coaches? Well, I would have to say that probably the number one thing I hear most often in the early discussion is simply, I hired a guy before and he was an idiot and I wasted a lot of money <laughs> talking to him, uh, something to that effect. And I think that is, is a dynamic that I do have to fight in my business because when we, well, I'll, I'll go back to the 2008 timeframe just to put a pin on it, that you mentioned, I created the nonprofit for career transition coaching. And the issue there was with the giant collapse, they called it the Great Recession. The uh, unemployment was double digit everywhere. A lot of people that had 15, 20, 30 years in, a, in an industry could not find new work. There was ageism in hiring, no doubt about it. And so what did they do? They hung out a shingle and called themselves a consultant or a coach. And they had not really worked the process to build a system, build a framework and develop a structured way to work with clients and bring them to some success point. They would just kind of show up and start as we say down here, chew the fat and talk about things, not really thinking about the end game, not really trying to drive any accountability or results. So yeah, a lot of people over the years have been taken in by a nice cheery personality, but has no meat on the bone. Mm -hmm. And when, when someone hires a business coach and we, we talked about this a little bit, but maybe get a little more structure on it. Is it a lifelong 
relationship typically are you finding or is it typically there's a like you said a task at hand and it's a six month or a three month or to find the time frame and then once we get that task it's great thanks doug and then if we need if we have if we hit another spot we'll holler at you again it, it does vary. There's no doubt that there's high value in some of those, you know, let's push through this log jam. Let's, let's solve the big problem that's going on. Watch the company come out the other side. And then it's, Hey, Doug, thank you very much. And, and that's fine. I have no aversion to doing that kind of work, but there, there are those opportunities where it becomes a much longer engagement a much more defined role. Oftentimes what I find happens with my business, I may get called in to do one of those sort of problem fixings, but then we'll begin talking about setting it up on a, like a quarterly advisory board kind of solution where I don't have a kind of an ongoing role day to day in the operation, but we will convene as a group. And I might bring in two or three other colleagues I've got in similar space, but with different disciplines to sit as an advisory board to an owner. And then they'll do their financial report. They'll talk about their operating metrics. They'll talk about their staffing, their strategic plans, all of those key things that really make the business sustainable in the long run. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I I think a lot of times they'll start with one hurdle, but you know, with a lot of things in business, you solve one thing, it might create another little hiccup over here, right? All these things are attached, even though you don't feel like they're all attached. Um, They are all intertwined or connected um, in some way. Doug, I appreciate your time. One last question here. And I mentioned, I might ask you this. This is something I struggle with a lot. and, And I think a lot of people do is we're really good at goals. We're very bad about going back and, and holding ourselves accountable for the goals that we make. And typically we'll just make a very large goal. Like it's always revenue, right? That's the, it's net revenue or gross revenue, right? We throw that out there and then we just kind of chase it all year long. Right. I think goal setting is super important for businesses in both ways. We got to have a target, but I think that, do you find that companies set their goals too far out? Do you think what, like just having that revenue goal, maybe not having it broken down into smaller increments or different things that they can achieve success along the way hurts them? Or can you talk about, goal setting for companies oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the value. And, and I'm sure that's something you work with all these companies on. Right, right. No, I, I definitely do. And you raise a good point, probably. And I'm going to make a very broad generalization. I think I agree with you, most of us, and I'll count myself in that. We've gone through a time when we set goals. They, they might, maybe these, as the uh, street word says, big, hairy, audacious goal, and you, it sounds great. It's like, wow, if I can achieve, that's wonderful. But the reality is when you sit back and start to think about, well, okay, tomorrow morning, how do I do that? It's unachievable. And so you have to start breaking it down into the pieces that are sustainable and achievable. And that's where I think a lot of people fail. They just they go from, here's my goal, and oh, it's too big, and so I'm done. And they turn it off. I, I, yeah. I mean, I know when I was starting out that you'd set this year end goal and by March, you knew you weren't going to get it. And so then you were just depressed or devastated. You kind of lost focus, right? Cause the goal was out of reach. I got nine months. What am I going to do with these nine months now? And right. um, I think that's so valuable to have someone that can kind of help you with that along the way and how to change goals. Right. Cause the world, I mean, what your goal was in January, 2020 couldn't be your goal in March of 2020 or night because of everything that was going on. So how do you shift that and shift that focus? Doug, let's do some plugs here. How does someone reach you if they want to uh, talk to you about some issues that they're having or get some information about your company? I know you have a podcast and things. Let's kind of share that with the listeners. Yeah, everything is available at my uh, website at dougthorpe.com. Real simple, direct. That's Thorpe with an E, T H O R P E. But dougthorpe.com is the website. There's some contact pages. I do publish a, a weekly uh, blog post that has to do with tips and tricks about a small business and management and leadership. The podcast, uh, there's a link on the website to get to the podcast. I, I, similar to you, Keith, I've got guests that I'll bring on and we will talk about all things small business. And my ultimate passion is leadership, shifting people away from a 
manager's mindset into a leadership mindset. And I've actually, for 2022, talking about big, hairy goals, I've set my own course here. I want to influence 10,000 managers to be better bosses. The uh, one dynamic that I keep seeing in all of the reports today in this uh, holy employment game, people join companies, but they quit bosses. So I want to help owners and managers be better bosses. And that's just the simplest term I can think to describe it. And I've got a lot of ideas, tips, tricks, and, and uh, tools that people can use to up their leadership game and really become far more of a people person manager. Excellent. And uh, if you go to Doug's website, there's a link there you can click on, you can get a, a a um, free like kind of a session talk to Doug, see if what you're looking for is a good fit for what he does. If there's some cohesiveness there or some synergy where he would be a good partner for you, there's no cost to reach out to Doug That's and right. see if there's a, and see if there's a connection. So if you are, if you've hit a wall or a hurdle or whatever analogy you want to use with your business and you don't have direction right now, um, or, where you can't get to that next step, don't keep yourself in that position. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to get help. The most successful companies in the world do these type of things. Reach out to Doug, get on his calendar, spend 30 minutes and, and see if there's some solutions out there that you can implement here at the beginning of the year uh, to get you to where you want to go. So Doug, I greatly appreciate your time. Thanks for jumping on the podcast. Again, my name is Keith Beggs. I'm the founder and CEO of Steadfast Wealth Strategies and then the host of this podcast, the My Two Cents Podcast. So thanks again, Doug. Talk to you later. All right, Keith, thank you. Thank you for listening to My Two Cents with Keith Beggs. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. All securities discussed are offered and provided through Steadfast Financial Planning, LLC. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Steadfast Wealth Strategies. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor and or qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.